A diol is a molecule that has two OH groups, di being the prefix for two, and all uh, indicating alcohol, or OH. To name a diol, we need to find the longest carbon chain that contains both of the OH groups. So basically, you start at one of the OH groups and you work your way to the other on the longest carbon chain. We number the carbon chain from one OH group to the other in such a way that any substituents present are going to end up with the smallest possible number. The substituents are located and named in the usual way. The OH groups are um, also located along the carbon chain. The uh, parent name, in this case a three carbon chain, propane, is given the suffix diol to indicate that it's a diol. But notice that we don't drop the E off of the end of the parent chain. This is truly just a suffix. We're not replacing the ending of propane. We're just adding diol to the end. Let's take a look at the next example that we have over here for naming a diol. This is a two carbon chain. So that makes it an ethane. Because it is uh, diol, we're just gonna add diol to the ending of it. And we're gonna locate both of the OH groups. So one, two, ethane, diol. Here's another molecule, cyclic. 5-carbon ring, so this is a cyclopentane. We're just going to throw a diol at the end to indicate that there's two OH groups present, and we'll locate those two OH groups with the smallest possible numbers. So 1, 2, cyclopentane, diol. There's a couple different ways that we can prepare a diol. One way is through the reduction of a molecule that has two OH or two carbon oxygen double bonds, a dicarbonyl. The carbon oxygen double bond is referred to as the carbonyl group. So this is similar to the reactions that we were looking at previously, just by doing some sort of reduction reaction um, on the molecule with two carbon oxygen double bonds, we can end up with a diol. For example, using sodium borohydride in an alcohol solvent, or this could also be a water solvent. This would give us a molecule that had two OH groups. That I kind of don't really want to draw the hydrogen on the end because that means I have to draw the other hydrogen right here, and now things just start looking weird, so I'm going to leave that off but maybe I'll number this carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can use all the same reagents um, that you would normally use for converting an aldehyde or a ketone into an alcohol. So if you didn't wanna use sodium borohydride in alcohol solvent, you could also use the step one lithium aluminum hydride followed by step two water or you could use H2 with some sort of metal catalyst like platinum, something like that. Uh, in last quarter, we learned that we can make diols from an alkene. There are multiple ways that we could convert a diol into an alkene. My personal favorite is using MCPBA, which forms an epoxide, and then following that up with H3O+. Another really common set of reagents that you could use for this is cold potassium permanganate with hydroxide.